Hi all, let's have another in a chess nutshell game. This is Michael Adams against Ludwig Hammer, played in the FIDE Grand Prix. Uh, this was just on the 22nd of February 2017. So the FIDE Grand Prix has good prize funds as well associated with them. 18 players competed on nine round Swiss Open for a top prize of 20,000 euros out of 130,000 uh, euro prize fund the first of four events in the 2017 Grand Prix series from which the top two players will qualify for the 2018 candidates tournament uh, so the 24 players completing in the Grand Prix series must each play in three of the four events so the time control 100 minutes for 40 moves followed by 50 minutes for the next 20 and then 15 for the end of the game with 30 second increments from move one so Adams playing white against hammer kicks off with e4 and we get into actually the go go piano believe it or not so they play the go go piano and this isn't so bad this position after d3 uh b5 might be quite good for black to get in actually um at some point uh for the moment c3 is played here and at the moment b5 i'm not sure actually b5 is palatable in this position let's just check this b5 immediately there might be a nuisance move bishop d5 uh, that could be a little bit of a nuisance move but uh, after d6 b5 is um it's actually one of the more common moves to stop it here anyway uh in this position so say say knight d2 b5 and you know black blacks it's quite useful sometimes but that's that's stopped here now with a4 we have black castling rookie one king h8 there might be the possibility of knight g4 here white plays h3 and black mirrors that and now knight a3 the knight might be uh, coming to the center like this at some point it's actually snapped off here Bishop takes a3 yeah because it was also supporting sometimes b4 and b5 which could be a nuisance if the bishops kick back over there b5 and the knight gets to be a nuisance again on b5 hitting the bishop yet again um, just just to show that just to show that uh, let's see we we'll just show uh, here there might be b5 and the knight might get involved uh, or it, it might just be useful just in this position anyway um, so okay it's it's snapped off and now Bishop e6 so why did black do this simplifying well actually white's got a small edge here uh, after D takes you know double pawns there e5 can be vulnerable potentially a5 trying to fix black blacks pawns Queen e2 and Queen c4 might be a nuisance for black putting some pressure on key points Queen c6 stopping Queen c4 putting pressure on e4 Rook b3 now a very interesting move Rook b4 so black seems to have this d file but white has got pressure point b7 here and in fact after Bishop e3 King g8 is played this can't be taken because uh, Bishop takes h6 that would be uh, pretty nasty and if desperado then bishop g5 hitting the rook is much better for white so um king g8 is played queen c4 not minding the entry point which has left that d1 square black uses that now queen takes c6 then it's check so yeah that's taken and now queen takes so let's have a look this ending is quite interesting maybe more interesting from white's perspective the king comes up and now g5 this is a slightly you know a, a weakening move slightly uh, and here after knight g8 in fact can you see what adams plays which is a very very strong move technically it seems if i give you five seconds starting from now uh, it seems this bishop by the way is poised sometimes to hit the e5 pawn but in this position what does white play okay h4 yeah it's putting pressure on this point as well temporary pawn sack 
97 we have um, uh, a nice move actually instead of this which you might have expected well there's things like knight g6 though holding both e5 and h4 there uh, the problem with king takes h4 is the knight can come with a vengeance with check into d3 sometimes and that's a nuisance so actually Adam's move is actually here bishop e3 these pawns are subject pardon me these pawns are subject to attention knight g8 defending and now you know black is passive white's regained his pawn with interest and he's fixed black down quite instructively on the dark squares he's really tied black's counterplay down here yeah, in a simplified position uh, g4 now fixing on this side c4 giving the rook some opportunities maybe for rook d1 later rook d3 later that stops bishop a7 possibility of bishop b8 uh, we have now f3 which okay gives gives up the f3 use but it's protecting everything bishop b8 now torturing e5 that's protected bishop drops to d6 though nicely on the dark squares and here king h5 the pressure is felt this poor isolated pawn black is trying to cling on now for dear life now the threat is bishop takes e5 it's a beautiful positional game really c5 maybe black didn't really want to do this he's driving the bishop to a great place to hit h6 that's taken here yeah black's not doing too well here Bishop g5 threatening rook d8 checkmate and here the game ended it's the king's really super aggressive uh, as an example and also the rooks ready to swim back to b3 so the game ended here hammer resigned if say knight e7 check that can just be taken and say a continuation like this shows the king activity the past pawn and the rook is it's all basically together it's all completely winning here when it's all put together like this uh, and of course so uh, white's a pawn up as well but this, so this is a real extra pass pawn over here okay yeah really nice positional game there I thought from Adams and people applauded on chess games com this h4 move uh, without h4 it's difficult to create more uh, weaknesses uh, for black uh, so it looked as though maybe in this position by the way I think black was ready let's see was black ready with king f6 here I think that was the idea king f6 um, and you can imagine this is going to be a hard nut to crack so Adams really weakened a lot more pawns at this key moment when he played this move h4 so not only giving his king great career prospects but also the bishop great target practice for h6 as well as e5 later so a really great positional gain there I think you'll agree uh, so in that FIDE Grand Prix not too many wins actually in that FIDE Grand Prix it's, it's slightly criticized for that such a huge number of draws but this is one of the more interesting games I thought and okay from Britain's leading uh, Grandmaster at the moment comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much